extension, decomposition coming up from the animal's life was just a matter of fact. It was just a part of the daily routine. For 2,000 years, the white man and white woman lived in the caves and hills of Europe, roped, found, confined in Europe, living worse than in the dark ages. He did his number one in the cave. All right. You know what number one is. <laughs> he did his number two in the cave, too. <laughs> so for 2,000 years in that same cave, he did his number one. For 2,000 years in that same cave, he did his number two. Can you imagine walking around in your number one and your number two generation after generation? Can you imagine not just walking around in your number two, but can you imagine lying down to go to sleep every night right there in your urination and your defecation? And that's what they did for two thousand years in the caves and hills of Europe. For two thousand years. That's what they did. And today they still like their meat raw. Don't they? Some of you go to the restaurants, you try to act like white folks, don't know what the hell you're doing. You haven't even been to that kind of fancy restaurant before, you're trying to show off. You know how you can fix them big, beautiful, thick African lips all to the side and get proper when you like to get proper. You're trying to listen to the white folks at the next table so you can decide what you go on. And they say, I'll have a prime rib in cut. You say, yeah, that sounds like that's pretty good. So you think you cool, you straight now. But then the waiter asked the next question. How would you like that, sir? How would you like that, ma'am? And you heard the white folks say, I'll have mine rare. You say, well, hell, that must mean it's a, a real special kind of snake, a steak. If it's rare, it must not be no more steaks like that one in the, in the whole restaurant. So I got to show off for my lady, so I'm going to get a rare in cut prime rib that ain't got no more cuts like that because it's rare. It must be a special steak. And so you sitting there proper, waiting, holding your cancer stick in your hand, puffing on a poison nicotine weed that the goddamn white man gave you, found one end and a fool on the other end of the cigarette. You sitting there waiting, and they bring it with the blood all in the plate, and then you lose your coolness. You ain't proper no more. You lose all of that. I don't want this here. What you bring me this here for with all this blood? I don't want to with all this, but I thought it was rare. He said, well, sir, or oh, ma'am, it is rare. They still eat their meat raw today. They like to eat it with the blood running out. They like to taste the blood. They got blood pies. They got blood pudding. They got a pudding called boudin. Blood. And they sit down and eat it like it's Hunts or Heinz tomato sauce. Big tablespoon of blood. I say, isn't it great, honey? She said, yes, it's wonderful. Pass me the escargot. That's another thing they hang you up on. They say, we, our special today is escargot ugohukishi. <laughs> you don't know what the hell it is. Bring it to you and you find out it's snails and them African lips get straight then. You're not proper anymore then. You're not holding that little, you know how you can hold that little finger up when you're trying to get proper. So I don't want no damn snails. I don't eat no snails. Crawling white folks love snails. They even have another delicacy that they call mountain oysters. That's the male organ of the bull. Sex organ of the bull. They eat the bull, the male bull genitalia on a plate with a fork and a knife and some salt and pepper. And call it a delicacy. And you sitting right there eating with them. You want a rattlesnake steak. These people did this for 2,000 years in the caves and hillsides of Europe. They crawled around on their all fours, 
That's why our dear brothers in this house, who we love and respect, they should be here at this meeting today. We love them. The Grand Master of this Lodge should be sitting right up here. We have a special seat for the Grand Master, the Imperial Grand Potentate. We got a seat for all of them. The daughter, daughters of Jericho and the heroines of Jericho and the Eastern Star, we got a special place for them because they are following after the white man's order and not after their own. They have 32 degrees, is that right? 32 degrees. But they say that they are upright on the square. They've been raised from a dead level to a living perpendicular upright on the square. In order to be upright on the square, you must have a 90 degree angle, is that right? It must be a 90 degree angle to be upright on the square. Half of that is what? Is a 45 degree angle. Is that right? 45 degree angle. But now here's the people who say they're upright on the square. And they got 32 degrees somewhere down here. And 32 degrees is freezing on the Fahrenheit scale. Then they get an honorary degree the 33rd degree, and they go into the Shriners. Uh -huh. And they name their lodges Mecca Lodge, Medina Lodge, Muhammad Lodge, Elijah Lodge, huh? Quran Lodge. These are white folks, white presidents, are members of the Quran Lodge, the Muhammad Lodge, the Mecca Lodge, the Medina Lodge. Did you know that? White judges. Whites who are in corporate America, even white straw chewing, tobacco chewing, snuff dipping, overall wearing peckers down in the deep south that will call us a nigger in a minute. They believe in masonry and they are members of Quran Lodge and Muhammad Lodge and Mecca Lodge and all of these lodges. And they wear a fez with a black tassel on it. A red fez with a black tassel on it. Huh? With a star and crescent like this one turned upside down. Not right side up, but upside down. With a sword running through it. You see them wearing it in diamonds in their lapel with a sword running through The sword is there to remind the white man you have robbed the black man and the black woman of their name, their language, their religion, their culture, their God, their folkways, their mores, their norms, and robbed them of the very power of their own being. And if you ever let the black man know who he really is, if you ever let the secret leak out of who the black woman really is, if they ever know who they really are, you will never be able to control them again. So that will be the hour of the resurrection of the dead, the rise of the black nation, and the fall and the demise of the white man. So they can't let you know who you are. They can't let you know who you are that you are actually a God, black man, and you are actually a goddess, black woman, and we are all children of the Most High God. You can read it in the 82nd chapter of the book of Psalms. Ye are gods, all of you children of the Most High God. It says, Arise, O God. That's the 82nd chapter of Psalms. Then they contend with Jesus. You know Jesus, right? Jesus, that's the black Revolutionary Messiah. That's right. Who is he? Now some of you can't say that because you're so used to a blonde haired, blue eyed, pale skinned, buttermilk complexion, pecker wood up in the stained glass windows of your church. Here you are, blacker than the ace of spades. Some of you so black and beautiful until you blue black, purple black and beautiful. Some of you so black until you blacker than 150 million midnights. Hair so nappy and beautiful until it looks like a million black power fists standing up on top of your head. But you go to a church with a white Jesus, uh, a white Mary, am I lying? Tell the truth.
truth and shame the devil. White angels with a white robe on and some white chicken wings. Some of you even believe God is white and you can't see him, you say. You believe the angels are white. When you close your eyes to pray, you see a white man. Oh, Lord, help me get out of this jail. They done gave me 40 years. And you see a white man in your mind that looks just like the white man that gave you the damn 40 years. How you going to get out? Get out. Oh Lord, the rent is due. Got a red notice on the phone, a red notice on the gas, a red notice on the light. The refrigerator is empty. Oh Lord, please help me. And you see a white man in your mind who looks like the white man down at the water and power department who's going to turn the lights off. White man in your mind that looks just like the white man down there who's going to turn the gas off. Look just like the white man who's going to authorize the marshals to come and set your stuff out on the streets. You look, he looks just like the white man that's going to serve you notice to get out of his house. The scriptures say he or she who calls on the name of the Lord God shall be saved. So the question is, have we been calling on the right name of God? Have we been calling on the right God? The question is, have we been calling on God at all? Or have we been calling on the devil? Have we been praying to the devil hoping that God would overhear and answer? Or have we been praying to the devil thinking that the devil was God? What is the best place? Where is the best place for the devil to hide? Well, the best place for the devil to hide is in the house of God. Huh? Isn't that the best place? Most people won't look for the devil in God's house. But the Bible says that God's coming would not be until after the workings of Satan that Satan would be given a period of rule and reign to do his thing. But then God, that would be an Adventist day, an advent of the God, meaning the coming of God. God would be seen coming in the clouds. Doesn't mean you're going to walk outside one day and look up in the clouds and see somebody up in the clouds riding a reindeer or riding a cloud or some foolishness. It's symbolism. The Bible is speaking in parables, symbols, metaphors, and similes. And you must understand the parable, the symbol, the metaphor, and the simile. It means that he would be seen coming in the clouds of confusion. That it would be a time of great darkness. It would be a time of great peril and danger. It would be a time when it's very, very cloudy and the people would be in flux and confusion. But it says that when he would come, that he would dispel the darkness and the clouds and the confusion and he would break the power of the devil by the brightness of his coming. Yes, That's what the book says to us. So, finishing this up so we can move very quickly. These people here have only 32 degrees, which is crawling around. But they are 360 degrees. And in order to be upright, you've got to have at least 90 of those. And we start you out with that as soon as you join the Nation of Islam. You ain't got to pay $500. You ain't got to pay 1000 We don't take you in a secret room and beat you upside the head and paddle you on the back and tell you that you got to ride the goat. Hell, you've been riding the goat all your life. We don't tell you you got to cross the hot burning sands because you, you've been in the wilderness and the desert of North America and the United Snakes of America since you've been here. So you already have crossed the hot burning sands. You've already been riding the goat. And you've been getting, you're not a member of the board of directors. You, you're always the one that gets the board. So you've already been through the initiation. So when you come in, you come in with 90 degrees. When you get the student enrollment in the actual facts and hear one or two of these lectures, you got 90 degrees. You can handle any grand math. Huh? You can handle any grand matron. Because the black grand matron and the black 
or Grand Master really is supposed to be here. That's the truth. That is knowledge, 32 degrees, that was given to white people to rule for a limited period of time. So they were given limited knowledge for a limited period. Not much, hell, if we would have been given any more than that, we would never get out of this condition. You see what they've been able to do with that. You still with me? So God is the supreme being. Now what does, there are three ways of spelling damn. D-A-M, not talking about that which blocks water, but you can spell dam, D-A-M, according to the so-called lexicographers, Webster and the Thorndike and the other boys, D-A-M-N and D-A-M-N-E-D. All three mean the same thing depending on the usage of the term. What does damn mean? Damn or damned means to be condemned to hell. To be sentenced, convicted, or condemned to hell. To be meted out the punishment of hell's fire and hell's destruction. That's what damn means. And so if somebody says the God damn white man, that's not cursing, that's not blasphemy, it is only, it's not using God's name in vain, fool. Only God can damn a thing. Nobody else has the power to convict it, to condemn it, to sentence it to hell, and to destroy it completely and utterly, except God himself. So when you say God damn the thing, then that means they ain't no bringing that thing back. The Holy Quran says, he or she that Allah exalts is exalted indeed. But he or she that Allah debases or brings down, no one can raise them up. So when God damns you, when God sentences you, when God convicts you, when God condemns you to the death and doom and destruction of hell, then there is nothing that can bring you back. So when we say the God damn white man, it's not to be vulgar, it's not to be blasphemous, it's not to be cursing, but it is to say that God has damned the white man. God has condemned the white man. God has sentenced and convicted the white man, and his world is coming down. And your world, it is time for your world to come up again. God damn white man. Who are we talking about? Who? We're talking about the who? We're talking about the goddamn white man. Now, some of you may say, well, that's a pretty slick explanation, but I'm still going to call Chicago on you. It was in this very city that Minister Farrakhan, when he was a young spokesman and representative for the Nation of Islam, he spoke at Manual Arts High School. Right. And he taught a subject on the white man being a bastard, the white woman being a bitch, and the children of the white woman being sons of bitches. <laughs> and people were sitting in the audience in shock. But when he got through explaining that thing, and defining that thing, and unlocked our minds to that thing, I mean the audience was rocking. But some jaws were tight and they wouldn't call on Elijah Muhammad. Do you know the apostle that Minister Farrakhan came out here and he was up there using all kinds of language in, at Manual Arts High School? But one day we will go into that. How the white man is a bastard. How the white woman is a bitch. That's a dog. That's all it is. And how the children are sons of bitches. We'll go into that one day. From an academic, religious, and spiritual perspective. We'll stay away from the vulgar. All right? He taught that subject. How many were at manual arts when Minister Farrakhan taught that subject? Someone has one, two, very well, few of them were around at that time. Some have heard the tape. But today, the goddamn white man. There was even a book out called 
the goddamn white man. When Minister Malcolm X used to speak in Harlem, he used to speak on that famous corner, and the bookstore behind him had a big banner on the front of the store that said the goddamn white man. God has damned, condemned, convicted, and sentenced the white man's world to hell. His dollar is in trouble. His dollar is not respected on the foreign market the way it used to be. Huh? The financial capitals and centers of the world, for the most part, were stationed in America, Wall Street and others. Now of the ten, over five, maybe six, seven or more, are now in Japan. America has fallen behind in technology, fallen behind in science, fallen behind in mathematics. Where she used to be the number one lender nation of the world, she is now the number one debtor nation of the world. She has a serious balance of payment deficit that runs into the trillion dollar figure. Huh? And all her great, excuse me, minds of economics and finance can't balance the books for America. America is coming down. America is falling. So the scripture says Babylon the great is falling and falling. She has become the habitation of death. Huh? The hole of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. This is that mystery Babylon that the book of Revelations is talking about that is now falling. It is the habitation of death. And God has condemned America, and the destruction of America is because of you. He's sending rain, irregular rain, snow, hail, and earthquake today. Twisters and tornadoes today. Because of America's wicked mistreatment of God's chosen people that are here in the midst of this no good beast. So when God damns America, condemns America, you shouldn't get in the way. But some of you get angry. I, 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 I can't go along with that. God has not condemned white people. That's so silly. You're the one that's silly. You should want God to step in and intervene, intervene for you. All the hell you've been catching from this crap. Over 400 years of slavery, suffering, and death. A strange fruit that hangs from the trees with blood at the root. Who is that Bessie Smith or Billie Holiday? Used to sing it. Strange fruit in the south with, uh, on the trees with blood at the root. That strange fruit was the black man and the black woman hanging from the trees. Huh? Drowned us in the lakes, the rivers, the brooks, and the streams. Burned us alive, cut our black women's stomachs open, pregnant, and snatched the babies from their stomach and crushed the baby under their boot here. <laughs> Tie horses and oxen to them while they're pregnant, eight, nine months, and beat the horses and make them run in opposite directions and tear a body apart so the black baby could fall from her. I'm talking about the goddamn white man. But some of you today, you like a milk toast sissified, punkified kind of teaching where we're talking about, well, maybe we'll be able to get along together. <laughs> After all, we do have a man running for president. Hell, that's all he's doing is running. It's a pursuit he'll never catch up with. should be run out of town by sundown. He should be running for the border. It's true. You never read where Jesus ran for Caesar's position. If he couldn't be Caesar, he wanted to be vice Caesar. Moses, the great liberator who came saying, let my people go. You never read where Moses wanted to be Pharaoh. If I can't be Pharaoh, let me be vice Pharaoh. 
If I can't be Pharaoh, not vice Pharaoh, let me be head of the joint snakes of staff. You never heard where Moses wanted to do that. Moses came with a straight up message. Every time he went to old blue-eyed devil and beast, this never happened in Egypt. This never happened in Africa. This is prophetic. This is a prophecy in the Old Testament that is to be fulfilled at a later time through the New Testament and really through you and I here in this time that we're living in. No people, no 700,000, 800,000 white folks have ever been in bondage in black Egypt under a black pharaoh. That's the biggest lie that's ever been told. You can't find it in the museum. You can't find it in the history books there. You can't find it in the libraries there. You can't find it in the Medunetta or the hieroglyphics in any of the temples or on any of the walls. No white people been in bondage in Egypt under us while we would have eaten them alive. They had been in bondage under us for 400 years. You wouldn't even be able to recognize them now with all this dominant blackness coming from us. They'd be sitting right in here with us right now. We wouldn't know the difference. Right. One might stand up and raise his hand up and say, I'm here. <laughs> but we don't expect that to happen because they weren't in bondage under us for 400 years. That represents our condition today from the year 1555 to 1990 in a few minutes, I think. <laughs> and we fit the Genesis prophecy of Genesis, the 15th chapter, the 13th, the 14th, and 15th verses of being in bondage in a strange land among a strange people oppressed and afflicted for 400 years. We are the only people that fit that prophecy. The giant Chinese, the Vietnamese, the Japanese, the Greek, the Freak, none of them have been in bondage anywhere for 400 years except us. We are the only one. So that prophecy fits us to a T. But it's the white man who put us in this condition and is now trying to fool us today, giving us some token Negroes. Colin Powell is a token Negro. Jesse Jackson running for president is a token Negro. You can't get free by being president, fool. You got Uncle Tom Bradley. He's the mayor, isn't he? Look, I don't bite my tongue on these chunks. I don't. It's you so diplomatic and so sissified. Well, he shouldn't talk about the honorable mayor that way. There's nothing honorable about that nigga. He's a white man's nigga. You tell him I said so. His brother, the honorable minister, Louis Farrakhan, came to this city to help fight drugs in this city, to help fight crime in this city, to bring the blue and the red together under the banner of the black man and woman. He came to help with the educational problem in this city. He came to help with black female dynamics and relationships in this city. He came to help the black community to rise up from the condition that we are in to a better financial and economic state in this city. But old Uncle Tom Bradley said we have no place for Louis Farrakhan in Los Angeles. And you want me to stand up here and be polite and courteous? Hell, somebody must call it just like it is. All praise is due to Allah. You correct me if I'm wrong. But he wouldn't meet with his brother, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan. He wouldn't even approve of Minister Farrakhan speaking at the Los Angeles Convention Center. They tried to block and destroy the contract when the minister was to come and speak at the Convention Center. But over 16,000 packed in. And you had some others outside. You had the, the Jewish Defense League outside, Herb Rubin and the boys. It had been a few weeks or months earlier, he had a rally out there in Jewtown calling for Minister Farrakhan's death. It was called a Death to Farrakhan Rally. Now you can do that in some cities, and you might get away with it. 
But you can't do that in this city, not with me here, and not with some of us here, or this Jew turned up at the convention center. And when he turned up at the convention center, and brought the bad JDL with him. The Jewish Defense League came all up to the door where the tickets were.